Okay, and we are back. Um, we're gonna usually what we do is a 20 minute show, and Daryl, this is just you can know our workflow as we do 20 minute show. And the thing I love about YouTube, and you cannot do this on Facebook, is the editor. So we can edit yeah. out the pre-show, take the post-show, make it its own video, and then we end up with just 20 minutes of the meat of the show as its own video. Exactly. It's just so perfect. You yep. can't do that on Facebook. You get the whole thing or nothing. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, so we've got a bunch of questions here. I've got the chat room right in front of me. Um, Where was that one question? I definitely wanted to make sure that we asked Daryl. Okay, I can't find who said it, but I know that, oh, I think it was Leopard asked, he has or she has attained a thousand subscribers. Do you have any tips for maintaining the subscribers that you have made as a new uh, YouTuber? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is being consistent with your subscribers. So, you know, releasing at the same time, uh, same day, um, and, and engaging with them the same way. And I think as you do that, there's a sense of familiarity, and they're like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. I know what I need to do. Uh oh. Hmm. Um, Did you lose me? Can you hear him? Or? No. But I know right. it's working because I can see these audio levels. It's live. Maybe it's. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We're having a problem oh, here. I think that. I don't know why, but this somehow. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, Daryl. Yeah, you're fine. I'm having one heck of a time over here. I have to tell you, I just spilled an entire glass of water back here. And I don't know what is going on with me today. And this would be the day, too. This is live streaming it's, for you. I spilled water. I'm wondering if I'm going to get test. fired for breaking the keyboard. I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. Just had to get that off my chest. I could not just fake a <laughs> smile anymore. Oh, I feel so better funny. now. Moving forward. <laughs> so we are back. Sorry, I, I don't know what happened. I think I accidentally pushed the mute so button or something. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. then. I can hear you now, and I think okay. that we're okay now. Very good. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I have the YouTube API pulling in the chat room, and I wanted to do just a quick tu uh, tutorial and show you guys how to do that. So basically, the YouTube API is super new. So Unless you're a developer and you know what you're doing, you can't really do much with it. You know what I mean, Daryl? It's like, here's the API, and it's like, I don't know PHP. I don't know <laughs> JSON. I mean, people probably think I'm speaking Chinese. So yeah. we, I ended up, I have a developer that I work on with custom projects. So I brought him in. I was like, hey, look, vMix doesn't support it. Wirecast doesn't support it. Livestream doesn't support it. I don't believe the TriCaster supports it. And sure, they will in two months could be six months, could be a year. I mean, I don't want to pull on uh, Wirecast's uh, tail, but they do need to step up their game. They only support Twitter. They don't support even yeah. Facebook or Instagram. And how long no has comment. that API been out for? <laughs> Years. So you never know how long this, it's going to take these companies to build it in. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to build it a uh, thing myself. And we're going to give it away for free to all of our customers and every single uh, week yeah. on our live show. So cool. let's show off what this is. So basically what it is, is it's a WordPress plugin. Because I figured everyone has WordPress. If you don't have WordPress, you're not allowed to use this. Because <laughs> everyone has WordPress. And it just makes sense because it has to be on a server in the cloud. And so I thought WordPress would be the best place to do it. Basically, what it does is, and I'll go ahead and just step through the whole process. And we're, we're making this much cooler and better. I have a huge idea for this. So you basically, you log right into Google. And you basically uh, authenticate directly into Google, and it populates with all of your live streams. At least it did last time I <laughs> it was working a second ago. Um, and it's still in beta, so I don't know why that, that should be showing up there. But basically, it picks the stream, and then it gives you a link to your JSON, which is all the data. I know that looks like gibberish, but it's clearly working because it is pulling in all the pictures from my from everyone on YouTube. It gives you a whole bunch of information and I pulled it in. Let me just show this last bit because I think this is the part that people are going to be interested in is 
This is the vMix data sources. So all that data back there actually comes into vMix and you can see all the st stuff it's pulling in, which is messages. This is the, the message there. It brings in the channel U, um, URL. It brings in an image. Uh, that's a question earlier. And everything. Is this like, can, can you do this with Wirecast? Can you do this? Um, no. I am, I'm with not a Wirecast can expert, um, but I believe they can ingest data. Um, okay. They can. You can. So, okay. okay. So if you can ingest data, that's why I decided to do it with just JSON, which is a very, it's basically like XML or mm -hmm. like an Excel file. You should be able to pull this data into anything. The problem that most people have is writing a, a script that can query the Google API and manage all of the API keys and the, all the tokens and all of that crap. I wanted to make it easy so you don't have to do any of that. You click one button, log into your YouTube account, it shows your live streams, it gives you the data, the data is live, you link it to vMix or Wirecast or the TriCaster, and I, of course I haven't tried all of them yet, but that is my plan eventually. And voila, the YouTube API works. So that is what we did. <laughs> Jim says that Wirecast has been preventing him from being able to stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Is there any way that we know to get it, around it's this? Not, it's not Wirecast that's preventing him. It's Facebook that's preventing him to I do see. that. I <laughs> see. Yeah. But there is a way around it. It's really simple. Um, and, and two, it looks like uh, there's some good uh, thing about Restream.io, which is free which is cool. But basically what you would do in YouTube is you'd actually set up a, a, an RTMP stream and you'd have that yes. link and then you'd just basically yeah. not, in Wirecast you wouldn't say, hey, this is going to YouTube, but you'd say this is just a stream that's a, a custom uh, RTMP. RTMP. Yeah. I see. And then you can Great. stream out to both at the same time. I do that quite frequently. Yeah, and I know we've done that before and I assume that you use Wirecast because you have a Mac yeah, I do. Um, but I was at um, uh, <laughs> NAB and I was talking to the guys with Femex and I was really, really, really impressed with with that setup. Um, yeah. And uh, we were able to talk through a few things. And I think what I'll, I'll do is get like a standalone box or something to right. run it because it's pretty amazing. So especially the feature for the uh, VMix call um, where, mm -hmm. you know, what we're using right now. Uh, to bring people in is, I think, is really, really, really Im impressive. So. Yeah. You know, that was one question I wanted Very to get convenient. at with you, Daryl, is what was your impression of NAB? And just because you're coming from a YouTube perspective, and I didn't get to really yeah. walk around much, but what did you think? What were people talking about? So I, I think NAB is a great place, um, and there's a lot of things going on in the industry that's really, really interesting. But I think a lot of people are missing the mark. Um, I think a lot of businesses won't be in business much longer unless they pivot and um, really figure out where they're going. And so, you know, they're, they're, NAB is a great place to showcase new product and you know get some buzz around that product and so on and so forth. Uh, what I find fascinating, though, um, was a lot of it was like four or five years behind where I thought it would be. You know, mm -hmm. and th there's some that were at way ahead. Um, I was really impressed with the live streaming area there, and there's some new components uh, where you can do a lot of mobile live streaming, and um, I was really kind of sucked into that vortex <laughs> that's there. But um, And where I actually think uh, the industry's going is more live, more social, like I talked about, but yes. it's going to go into AR, it's going to go into VR pretty aggressively. Um, and, you know, we're, we're getting the technologies almost there, um, but that's the direction where, where I truly believe it's going. Um, and I know that seems really weird from a lot of perspectives for people outside the industry. Like, well, I don't get it, but experiencing a, a real VR setup the way it was meant to be is, is amazing. amazing. Uh, there's a place in uh, Linden, Utah. It's a, a place where uh, they do full immersive VR. It's called The Void. And you go to like thevoid.com and see, but you can be a part of the Ghostbusters. Like the movie came out, you can literally go and replay, uh, you know, the latest Ghostbusters, and you have it. You pack on, you're out there fighting ghosts, and it's that real. I awesome. mean, it's just like you're totally immersive. And they were able wow. to open up places in New York and Beijing and a few other places, you know, around the world. And uh, as soon as you experience it once, uh, it's like I took my five boys. 
or I mean, my four boys and uh, my daughter to it. And they were like totally into this. They're like, oh my gosh, it's like we're in a video game, Dad. We want to live here. I'm like, well, no. <laughs> There's <laughs> called like, reality. That is There's the future. Called, but no. You know, virtual reality. We need to be in reality. But right. Let's it make was that one clear. of those things where it's uh, very interesting. And I, I look at it and it's like, how do you actually use this uh, for business? How do you actually use it for conferences? And so, you okay. know, you could be anywhere in the world and connect with anyone. Like you're sitting in the same room, at, you know, at a conference table or whatever, and you're having those conversations. This, you know, instead of flying, you know, thousands of miles to go do things that you could actually do just in person in the the virtual realm. So, but you'll still get that face to face interaction that's so important with communication and business. So that's yeah, really, and really I think really technology is. Yeah, I think technology is is definitely there, but. Um, Paul, I think your your brothers is it your brother Matt or who's yeah. the Matt Richards? Yeah, so he did that VR experience. Uh, he was saying in London Lucky. since he lives in Park City. So it's one of those wow. fun, fun, cool things. I know. gotta check that out next time I visit Matt. And, a lot and I have heard f from the feedback with NAB was a lot of people were saying it's an in between year. Yes, um, I think it was. Absolutely. I mean, there was a lot of promises made in 2016 that did finally come true in 2017. So I feel like it was kind of like a catch up year. Like people announced things too early in 2016. And then they had and a product. Now it's like finally <laughs> almost ready. <laughs> Um, but it seems like Daryl, you you're really out there looking for like those smaller niche companies that have that VR solution or that cool thing that you're seeing, you know, blasting into the future. Um, I also sometimes look at some of this stuff and, and, and really look at it practically and say, you know, I know people that are still streaming in 720. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like a lot of it is like finally catching up and becoming much more affordable, which was the main trend that I was seeing. That's like, wow, all of this stuff that, that we've, they've been promising, because I've been to NAB for you know three or four years now. It's like they promised it, they promised it. It was so expensive. It wasn't quite ready. It wasn't quite ready. And now I think like the basic foundational building blocks are not only available, but they're pretty much affordable. And that's where we c yeah. come in a lot. Is just uh, and that, the, the affordability out. is really important. But I, I look at the two conferences, CES versus NAB. CES is a, com a consumer electronics show. Mm -hmm. They they have a better pulse. The ones that were there had a better pulse on where things were going. NAB is like, okay, yes, this is for the professional. But some of these professional, you don't need all the setup that they were saying. Hey, we can do this, 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 and this. It's like no. It's like what we need to be is is mobile. We need to be agile. And we need to be affordable. And that's where we need to be because honestly, we're at a, at a point where things can be produced very, very well done in a mobile setting that you don't need all the bells and whistles and everything that's going on. And you can do a lot more because of technology, because of the equipment, because of the hardware that we actually have now and the software um, and, and realistically the speeds. You know, it's just the speed of, of rendering or real time rendering that we didn't have just two years ago. Right. Do you want to run the giveaway? Of Oh gosh, we forgot to do our giveaway. <laughs> we have a live giveaway every week and we forgot to do that. I we have a live up. winner. Is it still up? Let's pull that up. Yeah, and the other thing was 4K. A lot of people were talking about 4K. I feel, I feel like a lot of people finally added 4K. Run the clip? Oh, the clip, yes, let's <laughs> do the clip. And now it's time to announce this week's live technology giveaway winner. As noted in the contestant rules, all winners must be present in the chat room to claim the prize or a new winner will be drawn. Drum roll, please. Yay. Okay, Ooh. let's draw a winner. You must be present, clearly, if you heard. Um, John Missouri. John Missouri. Are you with us? Are you with us? Mike reminded us, and of course, <laughs> Mike. Here. Mike is like our savior. So yeah, you know, I think you're right, and Daryl, you know, you really have the ability to scale things, which is why I'm so excited we're working with you. Can I be a little selfish and ask you about how you're using our products and where you think they play, <laughs> whether it's a YouTube yeah. or yeah, you I'll might tell you as what, well. I I was like geeking out <laughs> over your products because you know we're looking for other solutions, things that like, are really portable but yet have really good quality. And I have been testing uh, for the last three weeks your products, and I am blown away. I really am. And I'm not just saying it because I'm on your 
your uh, live stream or anything like that because I would be very direct say, hey, they suck, but they don't. They're like, <laughs> well, really I'm glad amazing. you like them then. <laughs> um, and the quality is is like no other. Uh, I'm like really, really excited about that. I have a review coming out in a few weeks uh, on, you know, on the units itself. But uh, what was really impressive too, it's just like, it's not complicated. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are afraid to live stream. They think that you have to have like, you know, several years in AV just to understand, you know, what's going on. But realistically, you know, it's almost, it's just pretty much plug and play, you know, and you're good to go and you're able to integrate with whatever, with whatever you're doing. The thing that I was most impressed with too was the the Zoom capability, um, you know, for doing it at conferences. I actually put on uh, the biggest video marketing conference uh, in the world. It's called Vid Summit. And, you know, we were kind of looking at, yeah. hey, which, which ones would be best for this? Uh, because we want to live stream it this year. And um, I'm just blown away at the, the how crisp uh, uh, the quality is, even when you zoom in optically uh, to to hit what you're trying to hit, at, you know, very far away, which is really cool. So, Yeah, it's been fun. I think you have the joystick controller, so you can control two of them, which is, that's been yeah. like the main thing, I think, for a lot of the, let's say, more budget or upstart mobile setups where you're going out and streaming a conference, Two cameras, one zooms in while the other one's being moved around and getting the perfect shot. Fade to the number two, moving around. So, like, it feels like the two camera warrior. You know, it's like mm -hmm. with two cams and a joystick, the amount of production value that you can put into a conference is pretty incredible. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, I, I could literally mount this in my studio. I'm like, okay, I'm going to be mounting this because then I just flip it on, ready to go, and live stream instead of doing all my camera setup. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the camera that we have is really nice camera. It shoots 4K and 60 frames per second. But your cameras are so nice. And it's just like, I can just have it right there. I'm getting the quality that I want. And it's I'm not suffering. Um, you know, I'm not changing, oh, okay, this is just this type of camera when I can have my more professional camera to get what I, what I want. So I, I'm really excited about it. I really am excited. So... Well, I cannot wait to see, you know, some work that you're doing with them. I mean, 4K is coming, and that was prop. There was two main requests that I think people we got from people at the show, which we could not fulfill at the time. One was well, they want 4K, and that we're something we're definitely working on, definitely coming. And then the other thing a lot of people want is new tech NDI integration. Did you yeah. hear or see at all about that at all? Do you think that's something that was out there? I, I would. I would definitely do the new tech integration for that. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the things I know I was sitting at your booth for a while and a few people came up and that's what they were wanting, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, this is how we, we need this, you know, just because time. of that. Yeah. yeah. I think there was like 82 different, um, vendors that had new tech NDI integration showing at NAB. I wish we would have been one of them, <laughs> but we did just release a new tech NDI integration for the producer kits. Um, and. I am under NDA, kind of like you with YouTube, but I, I think I think that the cameras will be coming sooner than people think. Um, but not to say anything, so don't take that the wrong way. So erase that. <laughs> erase what I just said. Uh. Um, but l I want to hear. I want to ask you just a couple more, uh, just short questions. And here's just a picture. It's going to look a little funny, but I, this is a picture from the streaming idiots. And I don't know if you if is this is somebody watching Tom <laughs> Sinclair on their freaking middle of their. Like in a car. Car. Th that doesn't seem safe to me. I know. I know. That's what I, I mean, said. I swear they're driving. I mean, you look at their picture and they're driving down the, the road there. I know. Yeah. It's it's crazy, but it, it it's interesting how and Tom, I know Tom, he's 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 a guy, he's uh I, you know, an older gentleman who started his own live show in, he's in Alabama. The chat. He's, coming he's for in you. the chat room probably. <laughs> uh but he is the, one of the nicest guys too. I yes, really like Tom a lot. So super Same. nice. And he um, has got started a Facebook group like a couple months ago. And now there's like 500, 600 yeah, people in there. Yeah, he's doing really well. Um, and there's this whole movement around. It's called Streaming Idiots. But I think even from a larger perspective, it's people who want to live stream on a very low budget but have, you know, kind of like there's like this group growing in this. And I wonder, is have you seen similar things in the YouTube community where it's people who want to make – videos at a higher quality but still kind of are in and that like finding a community around making videos but now it's kind of turning into not just making videos and posting them but hosting live videos yeah yeah and two it's like um, i have a couple communities on facebook and 
I do live streams specific for that community, you know, and it doesn't go anywhere else. It doesn't go on YouTube, it's just for that community. And, you know, you give them a little bit more value. Um, and I think more and more, it's like there's, there's so many people out there in the world that have the same interests that I do. Um, and, and now with today's technology and the platforms, it's easy to get people to congregate where we can all talk uh, the things that we like to discuss and we can uh, resolve issues. And I, I think for years it was support forums and, you know, we're trying to get all the little things that are going on and we, we inter interact. But now it's with video. I mean, I, I, a lot of the things that people will type in a, a post comment and I'll just shoot a video as a video reply because I can, you know, I can do that more naturally <laughs> than I can like sitting down and trying to give an answer you know, in a, in a Facebook post. So, yeah, yeah well, I actually have worked with uh, uh, some companies just, sorry, testing me, no, but um, like apparently like customized videos and emails and stuff like that are becoming big. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. The emails are really important in my opinion, but I was curious, the other YouTube industry leaders that, you know, are they interested in this move towards live stream as well? Are you seeing a trend there? Yeah, I mean, I I like to keep a pulse on where the R and D budget is at YouTube, and the R and D budget uh, is quite huge for VR. Like, I mean, it is ridiculously um, high. But two, the R and D budget is really high for live streaming, and they're trying to to make it easier and more accessible for everyone. They introduced mobile, um, you know, like literally three years too late because they had the technology three years ago. I, we were on the beta uh, three years ago, but you know, whether it's bugs or systems or uh, my thought is they only have some employees and they, you know, just changed the path of where they, they wanted to put their focus. Uh, but I think the mobile component is definitely there uh, on YouTube uh, and it's a lot better than it was, but uh, the I, I these industry leaders YouTube specifically is really pushing uh, live live content and mm -hmm. uh, more and more creators are doing it. Let me give you a, kind of some unique ways to do live. Um, one and these are the ones that most people wouldn't even think about, but well, there's a lot of creators that come on and you can do two live streams happening at the same time on your channel. It, it, you know you don't have mm. to necessarily and it doesn't compete with each other. But what you're able to do is start a live stream and you come on and you get your, your, your fans to gather and then you can literally upload a video and release the video during the live on your channel. Say, okay, everybody, now that we're finishing live, go to this video and you have all these people going to that video um, and, and engaging with that brand new video that's coming out, which sets off all these triggers uh, for YouTube to promote. And then that live stream, instead of making it public, uh, we actually make it enlisted. You keep all the data that actually occurred on the live stream, but people with, you know, just with the, the URLs are only able to find it. I really so. like that idea. And I'm, I was thinking about people that do like, well, I'm really into the makeup tutorial thing on YouTube. And I'm wondering how are these girls that are so successful with their edited videos going to produce a makeup tutorial? Because I know it takes a long time to do the makeup and, you know, translate that into a live production. And I figured yeah. kind of what you're thinking, I was like, you know, what would be really smart is if they did an edited video, but then also like hung out live while they're talking about the video. Yeah. You know, and the thing about it too, it's like, yeah, the tutorial is one thing, but a lot of people want to, to get to know the person, the creator right. a little bit better on a more emotional level. Mm -hmm. And they can't do that through a tutorial, <laughs> but they mm -hmm. can through live video. And that's what's really interesting about it. Yeah. Prep Spins asking about our streaming uh, awards, the 2017 streaming awards. We would be happy to take your nomination. I, I guess if you saw on the website, you can take nominations. Let, I have a 60-second clip I'll just play to show everybody. Um, because And Daryl, I'd love to get some nominations from you if you know some people in the industry. Oh, sure. Introducing the first annual 2017 Streaming Awards. Now accepting nominations for several video production categories, including Best Show, Best Host, Best Co-Host, Best Producer, and much, much more. The 2017 Streaming Awards will air the last Friday in June. Visit www.streamingawards.com to nominate your favorite online live streaming show. Prizes include PTZ Optics second generation live streaming cameras, video production software, and much, much more. 
So I just wanted to share that. If anyone knows people out there that are ever hosting a live show, uh, what we're trying to do is get nominations and then have prizes and awards for the people who are you know, putting in the most work and creating great shows on either on YouTube or Facebook. It's also going to be a great place you know, to find those interesting shows because we're going to leave it up. So it's a good way to check out you know, who's doing really cool stuff with live streaming. And we've got some pretty exciting things planned with it coming up that I don't... I. I guess we'll save. Yeah, we have some cool stuff coming, definitely. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. I guess I wasn't supposed to say anything. But, um, Daryl, I wanted to <laughs> mention that if, if you... Uh, I'm YouTube always messing up. I don't know what's you're happening. talking with, if you know somebody who's really doing a knock-up job, just shoot me a quick email. I want to make sure that b Absolutely. people get, get nominated who are, um, who are doing a good job on the, either YouTube or Facebook. In fact, Andrew Haley from Wirecast is definitely on there. His his show, the Wirecast Tube show, it has been really impressive in the past few few shows. I've really liked. Yeah, the cartoon one. Did you that see that one? Did? Yeah, that was cool. That one, Daryl, I think you would really like, and we'll probably wrap this up pretty soon. But um, that with the new tech NDI, they have a plugin for Adobe Creative Cloud, and one of the new, uh, it's still in beta, but it does work, is Adobe Character Animator. And basically what you can do is you can have a character replace yourself. There you and go. Literally That's the, what way, I need. the way you talk, the way your face <laughs> moves, blink, everything. You just sit in front of a camera and talk and on the camera in the live stream, it's literally a cartoon. I want to do it. So there you go. We're working on it now where Tess and I are having cartoons made by, a, by an animator and oh, literally we could just sit next to each other and just chat and it would be two cartoons chatting as opposed to like Hoping to be camera. able to use that at Infocom. That is awesome. Yeah. I'll have to definitely check that out. So you uh, get your own, cartoon, your own cartoon avatar. Yes. Pretty much. Andrew just did a video on it. It works perfectly with Wirecast now that they support the NDI. Uh, so kind of cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Daryl. I know you're a busy guy. You're out there in California at a show, and you, you took the time to, to join us, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for doing uh, this. Well, have me on again, for sure, when I can show my studio setup. Yes, so. please. <laughs> yes. We would love yes, that. Our viewers would, that would, would love right. that. Well, thanks so much, Daryl. Thank you, everyone out there who watched, and I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, I'm super, super um, informative, I think, specifically on YouTube. We will link Daryl's channel below and put a little card to get people over there. Yes, please. And I really appreciate it, Daryl. Don't forget Thanks, to subscribe guys. if you haven't and you like this video. And after this, go ahead to our Facebook user group and ask to join. It's facebook.com slash groups slash PTZ Optics Pals. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And that's all, folks. We appreciate your participation in the chat room and can't wait to host our next informative Q&A session. Your questions drive the conversation forward for live streaming professionals around the world. Until next time, happy streaming!